Hi, my name is Vincent, and I'm going to be your lecturer for this course, Statistical Analysis Planning, which is part of Research Integrity at Munster Technological University. In this course, we're going to discuss research studies and research questions. We're going to show how statistics can be used to answer those research questions. In this first lecture, we're going to present a course overview where we introduce some quick research questions and then present an overview of the course itself and the format of the material available. Let's look at some examples of research studies with particular research questions. Let's say you're a biologist and the research question you have in mind is, does the color of light influence plant growth? Well, in this case, what you could do is you could take two samples. One sample of plants where the plants are exposed to color with light, Another sample of plants where the plants are exposed to regular light with no color. And what you can do is over a period of time, monitor the plant's growth. And at the end of it, you will have a data set. You can perform some analysis and you can test whether that yes or no, did the light with color have an effect on plant growth. A second question could be, if you're interested in seeing how does music affect a student's performance so on the left hand side, you could have students who, while they're studying, they every now and again take breaks and during those breaks, they listen to music. Whereas you could have a second group of students who were also studying, but during those breaks in between study, they didn't listen to music. And then maybe at the end of this study, you test how they get on in an exam. And there have actually been studies in this to see how music affects a person's mood behavior. There was a study in the trend of cognitive science where it showed that music actually helps with anxiety and it's actually better than anti-anxiety medication. In that particular study, patients were about to undergo surgery. Some were giving anti-anxiety medicine while the others were just told to listen to music. And they showed through the statistical analysis that those people who listened to music had lower stress levels. Another research question, and this one I think is topical is, looking at the effects of technology on a person's sleep. In particular, if we consider children, one question we could have is, are children's uh, sleeping patterns affected by using technology before they sleep? And the studies have shown that, it's, and it's no surprise, that there is indeed a very strong correlation between electronic devices and sleep deprivation in, in children. So hopefully those three simple examples give you an idea of the flavor of what we're going to be looking at in this course. You're going to have some type of research study with a research question at the heart of that study. So your study itself is going to explore that topic and you're looking for new knowledge and using data analysis techniques to answer that question. Okay, that question is the focus and it's just the main part of your study. It's really what you start with and everything that follows on goes from that question. Now, over this slide, I'm going to go over the indicative scientific method steps, which kind of provides a structure for this whole course. The word indicative is in there because this is a general guideline about how you go dealing with a research question and using statistical analysis. So it's not exact, but it gives you a good idea on the appropriate steps that you need to use. So the first step is you come up with your research question. So some question that describes this real world problem that you're looking at. Okay, and we've looked at some examples over the previous few slides. Now, the next thing you need to think about is your study type. Okay, for example, how are you going to get information? Are you going to use a questionnaire? Are you going to be interviewing people? And we'll, co we'll cover the different types of studies in the next lecture, lecture one. Once you've come up with your particular study type, you need to think about how are you going to get collect data for that study? Because you need information to analyze. That'll be the focus of lecture two. And the main aim there will be to look at different types of sampling methods. And there's two main types, probability-based and non-probability-based. And we're gonna show why probability-based is the one you want to be trying aiming for when you're doing data collection. Now in lecture three, we're going to talk about what happens once you have the data. Before you do any type of exploration, you first of all want to categorize the data. Is it numerical? Is it nominal, which is words? 
and then the types of levels of measurement that you can use to analyze that data. And they're important because they will indicate the type of analysis that is appropriate. Now, once you've categorized your data, then you'll talk about data exploration. And that's where the analysis comes in. Okay, and that's going to be split across two lectures, lecture four and lecture five. In lecture four, we'll consider single sets of data or single variable, whereas in lecture five, we'll look at two or more variables. And in both cases, we'll look at how you describe data graphically. So maybe use a histogram, maybe use a box plot, bar chart. And we'll also des describe how you do it numerically. So looking at measures of centrality and variability, such as the mean, the standard deviation, and what they represent in the context of your study. And before we discuss this next step, hypothesis testing, I just want to say at this point, there are different types of analysis that you can do. For example, we are going to be looking at what's called confirmatory uh, data analysis. That's where you have some pre-existing hypothesis or claim, and you're confirming it. So that's the confirmatory. You can also have what's called exploratory data analysis. That's where you don't have a particular claim or research question in mind. You're just given a data set or you have a data set and you're just exploring it, looking for patterns. So you've no prior assumptions there. Okay, so we'll be looking at confirmatory data analysis, which involves hypothesis testing. Okay, so you're testing some claim or research question in relation to your population of data. And we're going to look at that over two lectures. Lecture six will introduce the theory to hypothesis testing and then in Lecture seven, we're going to break down the different types of hypothesis tests that are available to you and which ones are appropriate for your study. And if you get past that step, you've reached the end, you're at the conclusion. So based on the results of your hypothesis test, you can conclude and that will be able to hopefully answer your research question from the start. Now, these set of indicative steps, we're going to see these throughout the course. Each time we come to a new lecture, I'll put this up to remind you where we are along our journey. Before we look at the format of the course itself, I just want to mention briefly something about research integrity. Okay, These studies that you're going to do, the reason you have to do this statistical analysis is it's not enough just to put out a question and provide an answer to it. You need to be able to stand over your results. Your results need to be credible. Okay, Because if you're going to be presenting these results to the public, you need the public needs to know that they can trust what you've presented and that's why research integrity is so important as part of these studies 